Welcome to the Literary Digest. Please subscribe to the channel or give a like and comment on this video if you find it helpful to help us reach more people. Have you ever found yourself in a heated conversation, instantly defensive, wondering why every discussion seems like a battle? Or perhaps there have been moments when you felt disconnected, even from those you hold dear, struggling to genuinely understand or be understood. At the core of our interactions, both personal and professional, is a series of choices. How do we approach others? How do we react? And, most importantly, how do we question and listen? In this summary, we delve into a transformative journey that explores the intricacies of human interactions. You'll get a glimpse into the lives of Ben, Grace, and others, understanding the pivotal role our mindset and our questions play in shaping the quality of our relationships. By the end of this exploration, you'll not only be equipped to foster healthier and more meaningful connections, but you'll also be better at navigating challenges, enhancing communication, and cultivating an environment of mutual respect and understanding. Let's embark on this enlightening journey together. Chapter 1. Reshape Your World by Asking the Right Questions Imagine navigating through life constantly critical, suspicious, or even dismissive. It's exhausting, isn't it? That's precisely the world of someone trapped in a judger mindset. But here's the good news, there's a more open, receptive way of approaching life and its challenges. Let's dive in to understand the art of switching from being judgmental to being curious, exploring it through the lives of Ben, Joseph, and Grace. You see, our emotions play a colossal role in how we react to situations. Ben, our protagonist, has one such revealing conversation with Joseph, where he talks about the judge or hijack. It's that instant where a comment, a situation, or even a glance can make us go into defensive mode. We've all been there, that sharp retort, that hasty decision made in a fit of anger. But Joseph throws in a golden nugget, while it's human to occasionally fall prey to the judge or hijack, it's essential to catch ourselves and redirect our thoughts. Now, it's easy to mistake being judgmental with exercising judgment. Here's the catch, the former is about fault-finding, while the latter aids in decision-making. Think about a time you might have jumped to conclusions about someone's character, instead of understanding their actions. It can strain communication, muddle our relationships, and more so, box us into a constant loop of negativity. So, how does this relate to you? Enter the choice map. The choice map is a mental guide Ben discovers, designed to help individuals navigate their reactions. Picture it as a road map that highlights two routes, one leading to the stormy domain of the judger and another steering toward the serene lands of the learner. This map encourages self-awareness, helping individuals identify which path their thoughts are heading down. For example, instead of asking why can't they do anything right, the map prompts a shift toward learner-oriented queries like how can I assist them to thrive? Such a subtle change in questioning can immensely transform relationships and nurture mutual understanding. Imagine bringing this into your daily interactions. Ben started seeing the ripples of this change with his wife, Grace, when their discussions moved from blame games to constructive conversations. Grace, too, resonated with this new approach, embracing the choice map's principles both at home and at work. Picture the relationships you could mend, the arguments you could avoid, and the bridges you could build by simply altering the nature of your questions. If there's one thing to take away here, it's this, our questions shape our world. They can confine us in judgment or liberate us with curiosity. The choice, as Ben and Grace discovered, truly is in our hands. So next time you find yourself on the verge of a judge or hijack, pause and ask yourself, what's a more open-minded question I can pose? The journey from judgment to curiosity begins with just that. Chapter 2. The Art of Purposeful Questioning Imagine walking into a room full of people with different perspectives, ideas, and solutions. Now, instead of trying to impose your views or even find a single solution, you aim to unearth as many questions as possible. 
That's the essence of Q-storming, a practice designed to cultivate innovation, harmonize disagreements, and foster collaboration, all by harnessing the power of purposeful questioning. So, what exactly is Q-storming? Well, think of it as brainstorming's evolved cousin. Instead of aiming for answers, the objective in Q-storming is to generate as many novel questions as possible. These questions, often framed in the first person like how can I or what if we, are designed to clarify objectives, identify underlying assumptions, and spark fresh perspectives. In essence, Q-storming is about paving the way for innovation and deeper understanding through the art of questioning. Imagine you're having a clash with a coworker, and your default approach is to assume their intentions and build a defense. But what if instead, you paused and thought, what assumptions am I making? How else might I think about this? And crucially, what is the other person genuinely feeling or wanting? Such introspection, as our Ben discovered, can dramatically shift the tone of interactions, leading to more constructive dialogues. But it's not only in the workplace that this method works wonders. Remember the deep and powerful conversation between Ben and his wife, Grace? By earnestly asking what the other person needed, by genuinely wanting to understand, both were able to mend their relationship. This profound realization that the techniques he employed at work could heal personal relationships was a game changer for Ben. So, what does this mean for you? When faced with a challenge, instead of jumping to solutions or assumptions, take a moment to question. Ask yourself, your team, or your partner, what haven't we considered? What new perspectives could we explore? By placing value on the art of questioning, you're not only inviting innovation but also forging stronger, more understanding bonds. Chapter 3, Listening's Profound Impact on Leadership and Life Let's now dive into the heart of deep listening. Deep listening isn't just about hearing the words spoken, it's about truly understanding and engaging with them. It's about immersing yourself in the conversation, seeking to genuinely understand the underlying feelings, thoughts, and intentions. Picture this, Sarah, a manager in a busy tech company, was often overwhelmed by the countless meetings and tasks she had to oversee daily. She would nod in agreement during meetings but would often miss the essence of discussions. It was only when she started practicing deep listening that she began to truly connect with her team. She did this by focusing intently, shutting out distractions, and being present. By doing so, Sarah discovered she could unlock more profound insights, foster trust, and even find innovative solutions to problems. This is the heart of deep listening. And by being curious and asking open-ended questions, she cultivated a more collaborative and innovative team environment. So, what does this mean for you? For starters, to truly lead through deep listening, you must first shut out distractions. In an era of constant notifications, this means putting away your devices during important conversations and ensuring you're fully present. This simple act can transform the quality of your interactions. Additionally, remember to cultivate your curiosity. Instead of providing answers, ask more questions. When you allow yourself to wonder and probe deeper, you foster an environment of creativity and collaboration. Just as Sarah discovered, by encouraging her team to share their thoughts and feelings openly, they collaboratively found more innovative solutions. Sarah's journey mirrors Ben's journey. They both shifted from a judgmental mindset to embracing the power of questions, not just as a form of inquiry, but as a foundation for innovation and growth. Like Sarah, Ben learned that being a leader isn't about having all the answers, but about asking the right questions and listening deeply to the answers. It's about fostering an environment where everyone feels heard, understood, and valued. At the end of the day, to truly thrive in leadership and in life, it's essential to listen not just with our ears, but with our hearts and minds. This is the pathway to deeper understanding, more meaningful connections, and a more enriched, collaborative environment. So next time you're in a conversation, pause, listen deeply, and let the power of understanding unleash its magic.
And remember that by embracing deep listening, you'll not only be empowering those around you but also setting the foundation for transformative leadership. It's a journey of genuine connection, fostering a culture of trust and mutual respect, where every voice is not just heard but truly valued. Chapter 4 Strengthening Bonds One Question at a Time Building strong relationships at home, especially with those we hold dear, is perhaps the most fundamental aspect of a fulfilling life. We've traveled through an insightful journey, discovering how to shift mindsets, ask empowering questions, and deeply listen. Now, let's take these principles and see how they can profoundly impact our intimate relationships. Imagine coming home late from work, stressed and anxious. This was a reality for Ben. On one such evening, rather than finding an irate wife, he found Grace deeply concerned. She prompted him to open up with a simple yet profound question, what do you need right now? Grace's approach didn't come out of thin air. She had been influenced by the choice map Ben had been exploring, that mental guide that was steering him toward a learner mindset. This simple tool began to reshape their interactions. What does this mean for you? When engaging with loved ones, instead of jumping to conclusions or letting emotions guide the interaction, pause and ask a genuine, open-ended question. This small change can make a significant difference in understanding and connecting with those around you. Our actions, as depicted through Grace and Ben's experiences, stem from the questions we pose to ourselves. It's a clear indicator that the foundation of our behavior lies in our self-inquiry. But how does one practice effective self-inquiry? It begins by cultivating a habit of introspection. For instance, instead of simply reacting when feelings of anger or frustration arise, pause for a moment. Ask yourself, why am I feeling this way? What triggered this emotion? Or is there an underlying belief or assumption I need to address? Such questions allow us to reflect on our emotional responses, uncovering deeper insights about our triggers and patterns. If you're looking to adopt this practice in your daily life, start by dedicating a few minutes each evening to reflect on the day's events. Ask questions like, what did I learn today? Were there moments I reacted impulsively? And if so, why? And how can I respond differently in the future? This routine not only builds self-awareness but also fosters personal growth. Over time, you'll find that your reactions become more considered, your relationships more harmonious, and your understanding of yourself deeper. The next time you're confronted with a challenging situation, particularly at home, remember that your actions will follow your thoughts. By adopting empowering questions, you pave the way for positive actions, fostering harmony and understanding. Final Summary Shifting from a judger mindset to a learner perspective can profoundly transform our interactions. Emotions, especially snap judgments, can hijack our reactions, leading to misunderstandings. By altering our questions, we can reshape relationships, mending rifts and fostering genuine connections. This insight extends beyond personal interactions, with practices like Q-storming fostering innovation and collaboration in professional settings. Deep listening is integral, demanding not just hearing words but engaging fully and understanding the speaker's underlying feelings and intentions. When it comes to intimate relationships, open-ended questions and attentive listening lay the foundation for trust, mutual respect, and deeper bonds. Our questions shape our world, and choosing curiosity over judgment can make all the difference in fostering meaningful connections. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe to the Literary Digest for more videos like this one. And don't forget to leave a comment below and let us know what you found most helpful. Until next time, keep striving for success.